Hey everybody, this is Randall, and uh, traditionally this is the Floribama Homesteading Channel, but today we're doing something different. For our fall and winter project, we're going to build a teardrop camper. Um, we're going to do a series of building the teardrop camper, and what you see here, Michelle, showing you, is uh, the book by Tony Latham, Building a Teardrop Trailer. So we are going to design our teardrop trailer based on Tony Latham's book. It's not going to be just like Tony laid out. We have a cedar strip canoe that we built a few years back whenever Michelle and I were first started dating. And uh, we thought it would be really neat that if we build a camper trailer to match the canoe. We're going to cedar strip this. So what we have here is our five foot wide, 10 foot long metal that we just went and bought. And we went to our local uh, metal supply dealer, bought two by two tubing, and this is an eighth of an inch thick tubing. And um, we had them cut it there on site, so I didn't have to come home and worry about you know cutting the proper lengths. Now, if you get Tony Latham's book, and I got this one off Amazon, and um, <clears throat> he lays out the dimensions that you need to buy, and then how to. Um, lay it out in the different measurements so what you're going to be seeing today in this is how we go around and we are going to lay out this trailer frame and we're going to build this trailer frame hopefully today and uh, we just laid out our, our long pieces of pipe we've gotten it square i've measured from corner to corner from corner to corner and then our tongue piece right here I've got that all centered and squared up. We took a measurement and ran from here to the tip of the tongue and the same from the other way, other direction. And um, when we went to go get our metal, we bought 60 foot of metal and we, we paid right at $213 just in metal two inch tubing at our local dealer. Our axle that we have is a 2,000 pound torsion axle and it's back there in the back and I know you can't see it for all the stuff in the way, but uh, when I ordered that, that was $343 to have that made and delivered and it took about two weeks for it to get here. So if you decide to do a trailer, go ahead and start ordering this stuff well in advance you know, for shipping. The other day I just went ahead and ordered the door and the window and the hinge that's going to go on the back of this teardrop trailer and that'll be here next week so hopefully when we get this welded up we get it painted get the wheels on it and ready to go our other supplies will be here and we can start laying out the profile and i'm going to use tony's profile dimensions that he has here in the book if you if you buy the book you already have the book you can go to the back and he's got all the measurements right there and um so that's what we're going to use to lay out our profile since he gives you step by step on how to do it. Um, and I've been talking with Tony off and on in, in the different chat rooms. Right now, uh, where I talk to him the most is on uh, DIY Teardrop uh, Builders Facebook forum. And if you have a question, he generally steps right up and responds. And uh, I've had a few questions for him. and usually within just minutes or a few hours he responds back to answer my question super uh super nice super helpful guy and uh, he's always there helping people you know with their questions and their bills um also one of the expenses we just paid we've got these upgraded trailer rims and we got that at eTrailers.com. those are 15 inch trailer rims we still got to order the tires and get the tires mounted on there that'll be this week so just between the rims, the metal, the axle, the door, the hinge, and a few other little components that we've got going into this build, we're already a thousand dollars deep into this build. Now, a lot of people will find used trailers and they'll modify them to what they want in order for them to do their build. But everywhere I was looking, the trailers were like a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars for a five by ten, and I was like. Michelle on it. We could buy the metal, we could buy the welder, and I just practice some of our welds, and we could weld this thing up exactly how we want it, how we need it, and how we really want it to be. And 
still not be out the $1,200 as if you had to go uh, buy a new one and then slightly modify the newer ones. And I can tell you what, with this uh, this tubing, the torsion axle, this thing is going to be way overbuilt for the amount of weight that it's going to be um, built for. This whole trailer, I'm expecting about 1,500 pounds average, give or take uh, 100 pounds or so. But um, this trailer is going to be built to far exceed the limits of, of that, that trailer. So we went out to Harbor Freight and we bought the titanium welder machine over there. And uh, I've run a few beads. Michelle has run a few beads. We're pretty happy with how it's turned out. And I've got family members and friends that are welders. And I'm going to have them come over and check our welds before we call it good. That way we know that this trailer is going to hold up. And one of the other things that we think we're going to do, and we'll probably show you later in the video as we build it, is I got these scrap pieces from my friend down the road that's a welder. And I think we're just going to put these gussets in like that and kind of uh, help shore up and secure the frame. And we can drill a bolt hole through that and we can build uh, bolt our cabin down onto our frame if we put those in different areas through the trailer. So um, you'll just have to stay tuned and see how all that turns out. But we hope you enjoy the video and if there's anything that I, that I want to stop and explain all the way we'll come back and we'll narrate in and uh, clip in all that stuff. I did watch a YouTube video on building trailers and the guys did recommend that whenever you're welding uh, square tubings like this you want to tack the front and uh, tack the, the outside corners and then come back and weld down the seam first, this side, and then come along and, and do your top, do your bottom, and then save the inside weld for last. And uh, I don't know the mechanics of that, but what he said is that keeps the melt, the, um, the weld from potato chipping or bending out. I guess that's that's an issue. I'm not a welder. I don't know. I'm just documenting our experience here on building the uh, the teardrop trailer. So that's the method that we're going to go by. Is we're going to tack and weld in those orders. And uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. If you got any uh, comments or questions, leave it below. And uh, hope you enjoy. It. Okay, everybody, <clears throat> we got the trailer welded up, and uh, I had a question about how this tongue section was going to work with this receiver, the way that uh, Tony described in his book. So I sent him a message, and lucky for me, he responded really quick. Um, he said basically he put the receiver on to make sure he had several inches of overlap down here, and then that's where he pretty much welded. So the eight inches that you see that's in the book, I'm not going to be able to, uh, to do that and feel comfortable that I have enough of this pipe that I can use to go into here that I can put a pin through and have proper amount on the back side of this receiver. So what I did is I measured back 10 inches. 10 inches gives me four inches that my coupler will mount down on and I could bolt through and possibly even weld. I don't know. I think it's just a bolt on only, but that's going to be four inches to be able to do that. And then that would allow me six inches. So I'm looking at 10 inches all together. So six inches will go halfway down this one foot long piece. And then that will leave me six inches of pipe on this end and then six inches for this that I'm gonna use as the uh, receiver coupler to go inside the, the, cup, the hitch coupler that goes inside this receiver here. So I've measured back 10 inches and I'm gonna cut this pipe off and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna uh, draw a line underneath this pipe and then I'm gonna cut that angle and on this side also. And then we're gonna come back and weld that amount onto the uh, the pipe itself right there and then this will be removed and we'll use this section like i said for the uh, for the coupler 
So that is the only part that I saw so far that needed a little bit more explaining. You can see back there, we got the axle laying up there, but that's just laying up there. We haven't welded it. I just had a little extra time and I didn't want to get into it, into handling this yet because we had a, a, an obligation this evening to go to. But now it's the next day and uh, I'm back out in the shop and we're going to pick up where we left off. And uh, I'm gonna try to get a clip explaining how we, we laid the axle up there. That's real simple. And I don't think there's any reason to sweat laying an axle up there. The only complicated part about this, this trailer was this section right here. Other than that, the rest of this was just laid on the ground, squared up perfect. I mean, within the eighth of an inch, the 16th of an inch, you want it dead on perfect to make sure your trailer tracks uh, right and true down the road but the rest of this has been easy and I haven't showed you very much video of welding that up because there's just nothing to that but we're gonna come back um, I'm gonna turn the camera off I'm gonna make this cut and if I get these cuts all right maybe I'll, I'll come back on and uh, show you the other the other weld here Okay, everybody what we did here is we come up with a, a solution to the uh, to the problem pull this receiver off and you can see where these uh, support arms here come together on our main toe so I used my saw got it up to where I needed it put my uh, metal cutting blade on there and I cut these angles exactly how I needed them and I've got this receiver and I slide the receiver down on there, bring the arms in, and if you look just right here in the back, I left enough that I can weld right down through the backs and along the seams. You see I got a pretty good uh, joint right here. I took the paint off of my receiver so that I can get a good weld there. So what I'll do is I'll zip up, I'll pull these arms out and I'll zip up this hitch onto this uh, this tow bar right here. We'll bring the arms in and then we'll weld as much as we possibly can along the back and along all these other seams. And whenever I cut that piece of tube off, I now can use this, and I cut this 10 inches. That's because when the uh, hitch coupler goes down over this, it only goes over four inches. Two bolts will go through that and then this will slide right into the receiver here. We can drill a bolt through there and we can put a locking pin. The main purpose of this is anti-theft. We pull up to a campgrounds, like Mr. Latham said in his book, you wanna drop your trailer, you wanna go somewhere, you can pull this, uh, this hitch coupler off, leave just this, and you don't have to really worry about someone coming along and stealing your trailer. It's gonna make it a lot harder on than if you had just a regular coupler on here. So that was the reason for this whole coupler. Beefs it up, anti-theft. So continue watching. Hey everybody, this is Randall from Floribama Homestead. We're back on the project. It's since you've last seen the, the last little clip of the video, it's been two weeks. Well, hey Turnip. And let me introduce Turnip. His name's Turnip because he just turned up one day. Um, we got the trailer built. And I want to show, I want to go over some stuff and show you what I learned along the way. Some very valuable information that I felt like if I share it with others, whenever they're doing their build, they can pay attention and maybe not come across the same things that I had to deal with. Um, when I first got all this laid out and I got it welded up, it was upside down. That way I could put the axle on. I could put the uh, tongue pieces on. And uh, before we got ready to flip it, I asked my wife, Michelle, to come out and help me flip this trailer. And she's like, call your Uncle Dwayne over. He's a welder. And have him check out these welds before we have to flip it back over and uh, do something else. I was like, all right, that's a good idea. So when uh, Dwayne came over and he was looking at the welds, he said the welds look good. He says, but he recommends going back and putting another bead on each weld to kind of build that weld up and strengthen those joints. 
just to ensure that things don't come apart. And if I shall bring the camera in, I'll just show you some of the welds that I've done. Some of them look pretty good, some of them not so good. Uh, like this one right here, Michelle. This one looks, that one looks good. I kind of ground down over the top whenever I was, I was cleaning some of the welds up. But first time welding any project ever. And I did this on the uh, little titanium 125 from Harbor Freight. And I have to say it did a great job. Um, I went through four spools of wire to weld this trailer up by the time I put in, um, welded everything twice. Um, when I cut the tongue pieces, the angle for the tongue pieces, I had some pieces of metal that popped off. So I cut those up, trimmed them up, and I tacked one on right here in the front, or in the back, and then one up there in the front. And I'm going to put a bolt, a bolt down through that hole. And uh, my neighbor down the street, Coy, which is a welder also, had these uh, pieces laying out. He's like, here, go practice on these before you start your project. And then uh, I was talking over to Dwayne. He's like, yeah, put those in as gussets. And that'll really strengthen the joints up. And there'll be less of a chance of having a catastrophic, uh, catastrophic event if I got the, the gussets in here to strengthen those, those uh, joints up. So I'm gonna put a, uh, right in the middle of those gussets, I put bolt holes so that when we uh, get ready to put our flooring on here, we're gonna bolt right down through those. We're gonna use one by six pine to frame out in, and then those will go by right in the middle of that one by six pine. So we got those all the way around. One of the major things that I wanted to go over and show everybody on camera is that when this was thing, when this was laying upside down, we had welded three sides. We were getting ready to flip it. He said, come over and put a double weld on it. And when I did that, I really poured the heat to it. And it caused, if you bring the camera up here, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly what I'm looking at. I put the camera down low right here. And uh, let me, let's get this shot. I get the camera going right through here. Whenever I was welding these joints right here, it caused the metal to bow. So over the course of this entire five foot wide, I have a quarter of an inch drop on the corners because the heat on one side of the metal caused the metal to bow. I had the, the, the tater chipping effect on the back also, but when we flipped it over and we welded the other side up with double, it kind of pulled that back end up um, almost back straight. I'm only an eighth of an inch off back, or probably about three sixteenths of an inch off back there. Not a big deal. The one that did bother me was these front corners where I was a little more off. So um, I know in the first part of this video I said tack weld it, but whenever it's laying on the ground, you can't, you can't do all four sides. So, if you can lay your metal out, get it square, get it off the ground, and then that way when you get ready to, to weld your corners, you can weld all four sides at one time. And that's what Dwayne had recommended. And that's what I recommend to you. If you get ready to lay your metal out, don't lay it on the ground. Get it off the ground, put it up on jacks, get it level, get it perfectly straight. And that way you can go around and you can put one run, one bead on all your joints. Then you can come back and do all four again whenever you double your welds up if you decide to do double welds. And maybe you won't have the tater chipping and warping effect that I had on this trailer. Um, I just took a little hammer and I kind of popped that back down and that brought the ends up just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think whenever we build our box, our uh, teardrop, the last thing I'm going to do is bolt it. So the box itself will act as a uh, one strong unit. So that when I bolt it to the frame, maybe it'll pull that, that metal up a little bit and it'll all tie in straight. If not, I'm going to have to go in here and put some shims in just to ensure that my teardrop trailer is perfectly level with the trailer itself and um, all right so 
I got it out here in the sunshine. We're getting ready to do a wipe off of some acetone. We're gonna put the primer on today. I'm gonna spray it on with the air hose. And then uh, hopefully we can come right back and start with the uh, black Rust-Oleum oil-based paint. And uh, we're gonna do some painting. So hopefully we'll give you some little clips of, uh, of doing that. So stay tuned. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm almost done with the primer. It's been a very eventful day. I didn't get to spend as much time working on the trailer as I wanted to. But I started out with the air compressor and I had some of this automotive primer and I read up on it that it does inhibit rust. And I wanted to give this a try since I already had this. So I wanted to do the bottom of the frame first. So I had it upside down. I used my air compressor with the, with the uh, spray gun and it went on just perfect. I liked the way it was turning out. You can see some of the lighter gray back there that I used uh, from this can. And then I ran out before I was done. So I had to run back to the hardware store and uh, Ace Hardware, which is local to me, doesn't carry this. The only thing they had as far as primer was the uh, rust stop from Ace, the primer. And it's not broken down. This is broken down with uh, lacquer and you can pour this straight into a, a spray gun and you don't have to um, dilute it or anything and it's ready to go. I wasn't sure, this was, I knew this was thicker. I wasn't sure how it was gonna do in a gun and it didn't work. So I went in and got the uh, roller, this little roller here, and I just started rolling it on and I'm getting one coat done. I don't like the way this goes on with the roller vise, the air gun. I'd rather be using the air gun, but I figure if I can get a good base coat done with this, I can come back over when this dries and put on a second roll coat. And I'm sure it's gonna do just fine. But um, just wanted to give you a little shot of uh, doing the primer and bringing you up to date on the project. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next clip. All right, everybody, this is it. We have finished what we're gonna do on the trailer as far as this video. Basically, we're looking at a, a welded up frame on a torsion axle, 2,000 pound torsion axle with custom rims um, and picked out the tires. There's nothing special about the tires other than they are a size 205, 75, and they're on 15 inch rims. So we got a little upgraded uh, on the tires. We put primer on the trailer. I'm about to go back with a little uh, paint brush and get some of these little hard to reach areas. But uh, that's it. We're gonna call this a done deal. We're gonna put, we're gonna build the box on top of it. And I've already started framing out. So you'll see a separate video before. I still gotta build the uh, side profile template. But we're gonna build the, the box on top. And then we're gonna come back and put the lights on. We're not gonna put the lights on right now because I'm not 100% sure whether I want to mount the, the tail lights on the fenders or on the bottom of the trailer frame or on the camper itself. So we're gonna leave our options open and we're not gonna wire it up just yet. But as far as trying to build up the trailer, I wanna go ahead and wrap this up and uh, call this done. If you are considering building a uh, teardrop camper trailer yourself, if I can do it, you can do it. This is my first time ever doing any welding. I did learn a lot, so hopefully I gave you some tips and some pointers to help you out if you decide to do a build. But um, leave some questions, leave us a comment. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you wanna follow this project along, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, set your bell notification to all. And we're going to um, do our best to give you a video of the entire build process over the coming months. And uh, we're, we'll see how it turns out together. So I hope you enjoyed this video and, and look forward to hearing your comments on the, on the uh, future videos. Thanks for watching.